What's up math fans? Today we're gonna talk about quadrilaterals. So excuse me while I work on my quadriceps. Yeah, yeah, those are these muscles. You know why they call them quadriceps? Well, you can't see them, but they're here. You know why they call them quadriceps? Because there's four muscles right here in this part of my leg. You know why they call them quadrilaterals? Because there's four sides. Lateral means side, quad means four. You're welcome. Now, here are the type of quadrilaterals you should be familiar with. Uh, parallelogram, and my drop-down menu says rectangle rhombus square. These all count as types of parallelograms. And another type of quadrilateral is a trapezoid. Oh man, no drop-down menu. There are some types of trapezoids, but they're still all called trapezoids. These, completely different names. No one's gonna say, hey, this is a rectangle parallelogram. This is a rhombus parallelogram. This is a square parallelogram. They just say these names. But for trapezoid, they actually say trapezoid. They'll call it a right trapezoid or isosceles trapezoid. Um, that's pretty much it. Here's a quick diagram. Trapezoid, four sides, and it looks like this. And the definition of a trapezoid is that two bases, we're going to call these the bases, base two, this will be base one. The two bases are parallel. Base one is parallel to base two. So you have one pair of parallel lines and then the legs are not parallel to each other. That's a trapezoid. Why is that separate category from parallelogram? Because in a parallelogram, two pairs of opposite sides are parallel but only one pair is parallel for a trapezoid. Some people even draw a little arrow here to show that the bases are parallel and the legs are not. If I'm looking at a right trapezoid, I'll draw that in a second. If I'm looking at an isosceles trapezoid, I will just put ding, ding, and show you that the two legs are congruent, much like an isosceles triangle. Isosceles relation, okay, relation. Let me get this out of your way. You are now a master at an isosceles trapezoid, oh, recognizing one. So we'll delete that, you got that already. What's a right trapezoid? Take a guess, right, right, right angle. Hmm, is that possible? Let's draw a right angle and a non-right angle. And here is a right trapezoid. Again, the base one is parallel to base two. That was easy, we'll delete it. And delete, 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 delete. Now, focus on the parallelogram. Definition of a parallelogram Two pairs of opposite par uh, two pairs of opposite sides are parallel. So this pair is parallel, and this pair is parallel. All right, and that's a parallelogram. What you should also know is that this is congruent to this, and this is congruent to this. So not only are the pairs parallel, but the pairs are congruent as well. Okay. Um, Pair meaning two, not pair the fruit. All right, so this is a parallelogram. Is this also a rectangle? No, a rectangle is very special. Not only does a rectangle have all these attributes where the pairs are parallel and congruent, but let me draw that. Pairs parallel and congruent. See how I mixed up? Now I put a single dash, single dash, double dash, double dash. Then I did a single dash, single dash, double dash, double dash. It doesn't matter. If these dashes match, these are congruent. If these dashes match, these are congruent. So it's the same, um, the same rules apply here, okay? It has the same properties. The pairs of parallel sides have the same properties. Excuse me. Okay, but what's so special about the rectangle that doesn't necessarily fit in all parallelograms is that it has one, two, three, four right angles. I'm only gonna show one but this gives you a clue, okay? Um, a square is actually a special kind of rectangle where again, all the pairs of parallel sides, the opposite sides are parallel and congruent, but they're all congruent actually. Not only the opposite sides congruent, but all four sides are congruent. 
and we got four right angles. That's a special about a square. A square is a very special rectangle. A square is a rectangle, but a rectangle is not a square. A square is a rectangle, a rectangle is not a square. Okay? A rectangle is a parallelogram, a parallelogram is not a rectangle. A rectangle is a parallelogram, a parallelogram is not a rectangle. A parallelogram could be a rectangle, but it could also be a square, and it could also be a rhombus, which is very interesting because a rhombus also has pairs of sides, opposite pairs of sides parallel, and all four sides congruent, but no right angles. So a rhombus is a parallelogram, but a rhombus is not a rectangle and a rhombus is not a square. But they're, they're like cousins, these two are like cousins. They always say a, uh, a rhombus is like a tilted square. It's kind of like that. Here's one more special thing you should know. If you draw a parallelogram, any kind, I won't specify what kind, let's say that's a parallelogram, and then I extend it, check this out. If I extend this, do you see anything? Do you see anything? Hmm. Does this angle kind of look like this angle because these are what? Corresponding. That's correct. Corresponding angles, if you saw my video on parallel lines, parallel lines, corresponding angles are congruent. So this is the same as this. So if this was, I don't know, 60 degrees, you can conclude that this is also 60 degrees. What's this one then? Hurry up. That's right. 180 is a linear pair. So 180 minus 60 is 120. So ignoring that, you should know that consecutive angles in a parallelogram are supplementary. This plus this is 180, supplementary, okay? Opposite angles in a parallelogram are congruent because, well, these two would have to be supplementary. So if these two are supplementary and these two are supplementary, then these gotta be congruent to each other. And that leaves that with 120. Add them up, quick, I bet you I know what you got. 360, total is 360, and is that true in just a parallelogram or any kind of quadrilateral? It is true in any kind of quadrilateral. Here's a real quick proof. Now that you're masters, I'm gonna delete, delete, delete. I'll leave that folder open. Here, draw a random quadrilateral. I don't know if that's a diamond or what, a parallelogram, who knows, who cares? Check this out. Did you see my video on triangles? Here's a triangle, here's a triangle. What is the sum of the angles in the orange triangle? 180. What is the sum of the angles in the black triangle? 180. Now, if this plus this plus this is 180, and this plus this plus this is 180, when I combine forces, combine forces and add those two together, I'm gonna get 360 for any quadrilateral. Okay, so here's an example. Now we put the algebra together with the geometry, like I always do. Solve for x. Get a real simple question. Solve for x. It's your job to discover what you know about the angles and then create an equation. Ready, set, go. You got your equation. It should say, huh? 2x plus 20, you with me so far? Plus, I'm gonna go this way, counterclockwise. What, clockwise? Okay, fine, I'll go clockwise. Plus 3x minus 30 plus x plus 10 plus what? Uh, oh, I went here already, plus 2x and then solve, right? No, don't forget the equal sign. I'm asking for an equation. I need an equal sign. It's got to equal to the total, which is 180, right? No, it's 360 equals 360. Now, I hate to jump over, but I'm going to jump over because I'm running out of space. Combine the like terms. 2x, 3x, x, 2x. What do you got? Actually, I don't have to jump over. I'm going to just condense everything. What do you got? 2, 3, 6, 8, 8, X, do you see any other like terms? Yes, 20, negative 30, positive 10. We, well, I'm gonna do the positives first. 20 plus 10 is, 20 plus 10 is, 20 plus 10 is, 
30, and then the negative 30, so that's gonna cancel out, go by constant, equals 360, drops down, divide by eight, divide by eight, x equals, hurry up, get a calculator, and the answer is, I have no idea, but 36 divided by eight is something, I'm gonna do this the long way, for those without a calculator, eight goes into 36, four times, right? Eight times four is 32. I should subtract here. I get a four, drop down to zero. Now, eight got to go into 40. Um, what is that? Five times, and five times eight is 40. Yes, the remainder, I hate decimals, woohoo. Okay, so this is uh, 45. And then you would go back, and I'm gonna leave this up to you. You would go back, and if X is 45, this angle is two times 45, which is 90. Well, that's poorly drawn then, not drawn to scale. That should be a right angle if it's 90. Plug in here 45, plug in here 45, plug in here 45, and you'll find all your angles. All right, thanks for watching. See ya.